Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the different ways that you can produce alcohol for your A-level chemistry. There are mechanisms in here, there are advantages and disadvantages in here. So this is one thing that easily come up as a six mark question, or a mechanism question, or an acid and harmony question, or a percentage yield question. There are two different ways in which we can produce alcohol. We can do it via fermentation, which is useful for biofuels. Or we can do it via hydration of ethene, which is used for industrial processes. In fermentation, we have glucose being converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Glucose is C6H12O6 to ethanol C2H6O plus carbon dioxide CO2. And to balance that, we need two ethanols and two carbon dioxides. We can draw out the structure of ethanol, and you can see we have a CH3 group, a CH2 group, and an OH group on the end. The conditions for this are that we need yeast. It is an anaerobic reaction, so without oxygen in a sealed vessel potentially, at 30 to 40 degrees C. The lower the temperature, very low temperatures here, it means it has a low rate. This is a pretty slow reaction. However, if we increase the temperature too high, the enzymes in yeast will denature and they won't work. This needs to be in an anaerobic condition, otherwise the oxygen will lead to the oxidation of ethanol. And we will end up with ethanoic acid. Here we have carbon dioxide as a waste product. We can look at the atom economy of this reaction because we have carbon dioxide as a waste product. With the two ethanols going on top over the glucose on the bottom. When we look at the MR of these, we have 2 times 46 divided by 180, giving us 51.1% atom economy for this reaction. The yield for this reaction is around 15%, depending exactly on the conditions. The advantages are that it is renewable. Glucose is a renewable thing that can be grown over again. It comes from sugarcane. This is a pretty low tech, low start up cost reaction. It is easily accessible to communities in low socioeconomic countries. The disadvantages are that it is a batch process. You do one lot, you stop it, and you start afresh and start another lot. It is very labour intensive. It takes a lot of people to do this. The ethanol needs to be distilled afterwards to make it usable. And there are some issues around the ethics of using food, the glucose that could potentially be used for food, the sugarcane that could potentially be used for food when there are people starving, and using land to grow sugarcane, which to be, is to be turned into ethanol, when it could be used to grow crops which could feed people. The second method is by the hydration of ethene. Ethene is C2H4 plus water, that is the hydration, will give us C2H6O, the ethanol. We can see from the name, the ene, the ethene will have a double bond between carbons. This very electron dense region will be attracted to the hydrogen ions. We will then get a carbocation, and the lone pairs on the oxygen will be attracted to this. We will have another positive intermediary before we finally end up with ethanol, and our hydrogen ions are regenerated. For this, it needs a strong acid catalyst. Phosphoric acid is generally used for this, and this is an addition reaction. The atom economy for this is 100%, as there are no waste products. It also has a very high yield. It does need quite high temperatures, around 300 degrees, and it needs to be done under high pressure, around 70 atmospheres. 
The advantages are is that it has a fast rate of reaction. It is a continuous process, so it's ongoing, no stopping and starting. And the product at the end has a high degree of purity. The disadvantages is that ethene is a finite resource. It uses large amounts of energy, which is generally produced, the electricity is produced from fossil fuels. And it has a very high initial setup cost. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.